Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and welcome to another Supersize eBay Sales. All of the sales in this video are $100 or more and were posted on my Facebook group on the Money Making Monday thread where sellers post what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, and then show a screenshot or a link to the item so you can go and look at more details. And these sales occurred between August and September of 2019. The purpose of this is to show you historical data of what actually sold rather than just hauls of what people bought intending to sell. So you can learn a lot from this video by seeing what other people just like you have actually done. So if you're not a member of that Facebook group, the link is below the video. You can check that out. Okay, so we are going to get started with Lewis, who purchased this vintage live action Christie doll for $6 at Savers, sold in two hours for full asking price, and that was $249.95. So this just goes to show you this stuff is out there. You don't have to be a doll collector to find these items that sell for a lot of money, just keep practicing and looking things up on your phone to see what they're worth when you see things that are unusual or out of the ordinary and I'm wondering if this one sold for so much because it was the African-American version because vintage dolls there weren't as many of the African-American Barbies as there were the Caucasian so that might be part of the reason that it has a higher value okay this is also Lewis who purchased this 1997 Pillsbury Doughboy Perpetual Calendar and this was five dollars at a garage sale sold in about a month for full asking price shipping cost was twenty two dollars and he sold it for ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents and that is a really neat looking piece with all of the figurines and numbers just a cool little collectible maybe for a chef or to put in a kitchen or something like that so definitely looks unusual and that's that's what's gonna make you the money on eBay is the unusual items okay Emily bought this textbook for 50 cents at a Goodwill salvage I'm not sure if that's the same as the outlet but it sold for a hundred nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents not sure if it's a textbook or just a architecture book either way bought it for 50 cents sold it for 120 bucks Graham bought this Cricut expression scrapbook cutting machine I'm not sure is that pronounced Cricut or cry cut I've heard it both ways so correct me if I'm wrong $20 at a garage sale and sold for $129.99. This is the famous mermaid brown bag cookie mold that Eileen talks about in the interview we did a couple of months ago. And she got this for a dollar. And there's a whole backstory to this that's really interesting. So if you haven't watched that interview, go check out that video. Anyway, she ended up selling it for $255 for an item she bought for a dollar so that really is a fun story so check that out okay next we've got George Kelly who bought this baby monitor at a garage sale for fifty dollars sold it overnight for a hundred and thirty Dana bought a bunch of 80s plastic charms and necklaces for eight dollars a few were broken sold the broken ones for eight dollars within a couple of days and listed the other 140 for 199 dollars when there were 25 watchers i raised the price to 219.99 and it sold with 33 watchers after almost two months so this is a lot of 140 vintage plastic charms and chain necklaces now she mentioned she raised the price and that is a great strategy when you have watchers on an item bump the price up 
because when you are lowering prices, what's the incentive to buy? The watchers are only going to think, oh, they've lowered it this much. How much lower are they going to go? And they will just sit there and wait. There's no sense of urgency. When you raise the price on something, there is a sense of urgency. Just like when gas prices start going up at gas stations and people rush out to get gas before it goes any higher. It creates an urgency. So if you are looking for more ways to nudge your buyers, uh, your watchers into buying, raising the price is a great way to do that. You can always lower it later, but I see sellers jumping to that um, knee-jerk reaction of lowering the price when they have a bunch of watchers and really the smart people are going to sit there and wait for you to lower it even more. So don't sell yourself short by lowering prices. Try raising it a little bit and just, I mean, there's no set percentage you should raise the price. You're just going to have to play around with it and see what happens. Um, this business is about experimenting. So you can't be afraid to try new things and experiment and see what happens. Okay, we've got Brian who paid $25 at an estate sale for this New York Yankees starter jacket. It sold for $169.99 in about a month. Same estate sale for Brian, paid $15 and this sold for $99.99. And this is the 1996 Atlanta Olympic logo athletic jacket. And living in Atlanta, I see so much of this Atlanta Olympic stuff all the time most of it isn't worth very much if it's t-shirts or coffee mugs or um, stuff like that it's because there was just so much of it made so this is kind of the exception to that because it's a really nice jacket and it's an extra large size so I think that helped him get that higher price okay we've got Brian again got this on a local Facebook deal Bought 18 jerseys and 8 hats for $200 total. Sold this jersey for $99.99 in a day. And this is a San Diego Padres Rawlings baseball jersey from the 80s. Okay, Brian again paid $65 at an estate sale in June. Sold for $279.99. This is a vintage Popeye metal lunchbox. Okay, this is another cool item, vintage item. Kenner, $6 million man, Steve Austin, second edition bionic grip, vintage, I guess you'd call it an action figure. He paid $45 at the same estate sale in June and sold this for $299.99. And seeing this item, you know what popped into my head. Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. <laughs> okay, you know I can't resist. Everything with me is a TV show. Okay, moving on to Tanya. She sold two of these St. John pieces she bought at Goodwill on August 8th, paid $9.99 for the gray dress suit and $7.98 for the gold jacket. Took a best offer of $40 for the gray skirt and $100 for the gray jacket and then she sold the gold jacket as shown here for $179.99. So St. John is definitely one of those brands you want to be on the lookout for because they are very high profit, especially the vintage pieces. Okay, Elizabeth has been working through cleaning out her cousin's house who was into, I think, ham radios as well as other type of radio equipment. So she sold this 
transceiver for $350 and it took two weeks again cleaning out her late cousin's house so it was free to her okay Judith this is my first time posting this Saturday I went to an estate sale to a house full of stuff and was very beautiful house she was a hoarder with a good taste I bought four vintage pageant dresses for five dollars each and I sold this one for $299 so these uh, they call them circle dresses because as you can see it's laid out in a circle um, different brands but these pageant party dresses are can sell for really high dollar as you can see here $300 for this little girl's dress Rhonda bought this at Goodwill for $4.99 a few weeks ago sold for $122.50 with $12.25 shipping wanted to stay with the Christmas theme and I thought I would lose money on shipping but it only went one state over so no loss on the shipping there so we've got a Christmas item selling in August which again proves that Christmas sells all year and eBay knows no seasons Mary bought this Spode Christmas teapot on marketplace for $20 and it sold for $125 plus shipping it was listed two months another Christmas item that sold in August okay Miraf paid $16.08 for this at an estate sale extremely rare find in the original packaging a doctor in Germany bought it and I don't even know what this is I'm just gonna read the title Syntec Systems Mastermind DLS light sound mind machine mental fitness system so who even knows what this is but she made good money on it so that paid off here we have some vintage tennis rackets Suzanne Tucker picked these up on auction for a total of roughly $17 one buyer bought both lots shipping cost me roughly $30 so you could see she has free shipping on this listing but she sold this lot for 105 and this lot for a hundred so cost of doing business very cool item I can see these used as home decor or some type of display at a country club something like that um, I remember having a wooden tennis racket and then they came out with the uh, really lightweight titanium ones and what a game changer literally that was so cool collectible item okay Vanessa paid $12.99 at Goodwill sold in less than a month this is a brother typewriter and she sold that for $195 somewhere along the way I mentioned that typewriters were one of those items to stay away from simply because they can be cumbersome and heavy to ship so it's always a personal decision I just know a lot of people getting started with eBay are intimidated by the shipping and you just want to make sure before you buy anything to resell you've thought through how you're going to ship it and if you even want to because some of these older electric typewriters are quite big and cumbersome and might be a little challenging if you're not used to shipping big items like that Cheryl bought this item for $4.99 at Goodwill it is a 1970s Chanel cat knitting bag or purse meaning it's the fabric that is uh, sort of fuzzy bedspreads were made out of this type of fabric and she sold this for a hundred and twenty dollars Dennis paid five dollars at a garage sale took best offer of 90 sold in one week this is a miniature replica Red Wing Crocs artist in the park Deer Park Wisconsin so it's a little set of uh, Crocs like you would put uh, you could either serve items in them or a butter crock or something like that so 90 bucks on that and we've got KC who paid $13 at a thrift store sold for $150 in about three weeks I've been researching a lot of older skateboard shoes since this purchase it's definitely a niche I'll be hunting for these were 
new Osiris Chino low skateboard shoes. Looks like they're new but no box. So $13 and sold it for $150. Then we've got Jennifer. I got this out of a free box at a garage sale. Took it home and looked it up and I was surprised. It sold for full asking price of $110 plus shipping after about a month. It is a baseball bat. Oh, sorry, softball bat. Those seem to show up in these over $100 sales all the time. So if you're in that world of baseball or softball, it may pay off for you to learn which ones are more expensive. Julie paid zero dollars. A friend was going to trash it since it stopped working, so I asked for it. This is a Microsoft Xbox One um, limited edition red unit. Broken, no power. So she got it free and it was broken, but it still sold for $110. Okay, Cass found this at an estate sale for $10. Comps ranged 125 to 300 but had all the original Pyrex globe. Mine does not have the original globe, so I priced at 125 expecting offers. Sold within minutes for full asking price. This is an inverted camp lantern. So just a cool vintage camping item. This is a really plain looking item that you might pass by because it just doesn't look exciting. Emily paid $3.50 for this Saturdays and Surf wallet at Salvation Army. Never heard of the brand, but could tell it was good quality. Could only find one comp, but these wallets retail for $145 and up. Listed for $130 and took an offer within 12 hours. My first sale for over $100. So congratulations, Emily. You have made it into the $100 club. And Markham had a funny comment. He said, the problem with these $100 plus sales is that they are like potato chips. No matter how many you have, you always want more. So that is very true. Elizabeth with another radio item. It took two weeks. It was my late cousin's. We are cleaning out the house. It was free to her. Um, looks like just a Kenwood radio or receiver and sold for $650. We've got Fred here who bought this item at an estate sale for 10 bucks, sold in nine hours. It is a copper enamel kit, kiln, fire, bright enamel, glass extras, so it's a jewelry making thing. And you can tell by the box it's vintage. So $10 and it sold for exactly $100 even. Natalie bought the entire china set for $75 in April. I have sold the serving bowls, platters, salt and pepper shakers, and a couple of other accessory pieces and made somewhere between $300 to $400. Last night I sold the teapot. This set is sought after. However, I have almost all the plates and cups and saucers that aren't moving. This is a Noritake Contemporary Fine China Blue Hill Pattern teapot and she sold that for $147.69. We've got Brian again with a baseball jersey, paid $9 at a garage sale three weeks ago and sold for $99.99. This is a Mike Schmidt number 20 Phillies baseball jersey, 1979. Another item from Brian. This is a vintage calculator with the case. He paid $5 at an estate sale, sold for $179.99. And KC has a cycling helmet here. He paid $5 at a thrift store, sold for $100 in two weeks. And Audrey had a comment here. She says, I always pass on sports equipment because I don't know what to look for, especially if the item is used. And Casey replied with, that's exactly how I feel in the women's clothing department. So as you grow your business, you just continue to learn. Um, and any progress is going to be great for your business. Even if you buy things that don't sell for much money, at least you've learned, don't buy that again. So you just have to continually 
branch out, push yourself out of your comfort zone and learn new things. We're never going to run out of things to sell. Um, I think Casey has access to more sporting goods type items because of where he lives in Park City, Utah. There's a lot of skiing going on in the summer months. It's a you know, very outdoorsy place to go visit. So he just may have more of that kind of thing in his thrift stores. So bloom where you're planted. Pay attention to what you see over and over again and learn about those items so that it just becomes easier the more experienced you get. Okay, Cecilia, part of my nine cent each cross stitch kit tag sale haul. So basically she bought a whole bunch of these kits which turned out to be nine cents a piece when she did the math. Listed and within two hours sold both of these, one for $200 and the other for $160. Shipping was free and I added extra insurance for priority shipping. So this one here is the Art of Disney Cross Stitch Happiest Celebration on Earth Mickey Mouse Castle sold for $160. This one is a Cinderella Castle Cross Stitch Kit that sold for $200. So yes, there's big money in this needlework stuff. And if you want to learn more about that, come take my needlework course in the premium library. Several hours of this information that will help you be a better picker and be able to identify these kinds of items to resell. Nancy bought this at the bins for about $3. Took a couple of months to sell, sold for full price plus shipping. This is an atomic Miro aluminum and Bakelite um, ice bucket. When I first glanced at this, I thought it was one of those old popcorn poppers. It kind of has the same shape and the same color and the lid and all of that, but this is an ice bucket. Okay, Ginger's got something interesting here. She said, Casey, Vetterly, and Brian Rappaport, I finally got one for you. I bought a box of car stuff at an estate sale for $5. When I got home, I realized it was a kit and knew it cost $899. One part was missing, so I listed it as incomplete. I sold it for best offer of $325. Had it for about one to two months. So this was $5 and she sold it for $325. And it's some kind of um, car kit thing that she didn't know anything about. So good for her for taking that risk. Of, I mean, for $5, you can't really go wrong. So she really came out on top with that sale. Okay, now we've got Nancy. She said she had lots of good sales this week. Bought at the bins for probably about 12 cents. Sold in under 24 hours for full asking price plus shipping. This is an Avon 1987 Christmas Countdown Calendar sold it for $110 and she paid 12 cents for this. Rick paid $2.50, sold in under 24 hours. This is a ratchet adapter, so a tool. $115, he paid $2.50 for it. Now we've got Lori who bought this at Goodwill for 99 cents, sold for $115. This is a vintage 1998 Blues Clues handy dandy notebook. I remember my kids loved that show. Um, so, I mean, this is just crazy the things that people are paying under a dollar for and selling for over a hundred dollars, in some cases, several hundred dollars. Um, you know, this just shows how much opportunity there is on eBay and all the stuff that's out there that collectors will pay big money for. We've got Vanessa again who paid $1.99 at a thrift store sold in about a month. These are rare Trafalgar silk suspenders. She sold these for $111. And then we've got Vanessa again paid $3 sold in less than 10 minutes. Fastest flip I've ever had. This is a vintage silver plated dial a drink cocktail shaker she sold it for $122. So let's just think these, these past few sales that we've looked at here. We've got a, a car kit, an advent calendar, uh, 
a ratchet, a little tool, a notebook, some suspenders, and now a drink shaker. Um, it just goes to show you that there is room in this business for everybody. And I just, I hate to see these YouTube channels talking about how, you know, eBay is dying, you know, get off of eBay, you're never going to make any money. Um, you know, all the thrift stores know everything, they're marking everything up. This is just not true. They cannot know everything because Vanessa got this at a thrift store. She got this thing at a thrift store. Uh, Lori got this at Goodwill for 99 cents. Uh, Rick didn't say where he got this. Nancy said she got this at the Goodwill bins. Um, Ginger got this at an estate sale. But it just goes to show you that these thrift stores cannot know everything. Estate sales cannot know everything. There just isn't time to research every single item and stuff slips through. So it's all about being a more conscientious picker, uh, getting out of your comfort zone. A lot of these people complaining about slow sales or not having success on eBay, it's because they're letting their fear hold them back. They don't know about something, so they don't want to try to sell it. And you just, that's what's getting in your way because this video shows you there is opportunity for everybody. There's plenty of stuff out there and these thrift stores cannot know everything. There's just too much stuff. Rosanna, my brother and I work together on this item. He works in construction and I knew what he was looking for with this saw. He bought it for $40 and I had it listed for about six months. Sold for full price of $335 plus shipping and we split the profit, which is fair. Emily, her best sale yet. Congratulations! And it's my first account over $100. So here we have another example of all these sellers that have never had a $100 sale. They're getting them now because persistence, consistency, just keep going and don't give up and you will get there. This she found at a garage sale for $25, sold within 24 hours for full asking price. This is a Burberry belted trench coat with a uh, wool cashmere blend. So 25 bucks and she sold it for $258. Here's another one of those circle dresses. Uh, Jen paid 99 cents at a thrift store, sold for full price the next day. Vintage Kathleen Scott girl size five pink circle frilly dress, $100 twenty dollars so obviously the thrift stores are not on to these little pageant dresses because we keep seeing those pop up or maybe they are but not every thrift store is going to know to mark these up or nor will they get that price if they do mark it up so we just have to be smarter than the thrift stores okay Dawn paid one dollar at a church thrift store listed for 175 took best offer of 150 in about six weeks if you look at Dawn's pictures there she takes her pictures outside she's got her mannequin up against a fence with the trees in the background she put this post on my Facebook group about when she takes her pictures when taking pictures, I do whatever I need in order to get a good shot. It's funny to see what the buyer ends up seeing versus how it was set up to get the shot. So like this dress, she had secured it to another mannequin and it looks like a little cart there to show the full skirt on it. So thanks for sharing how you do that because presentation is everything. Okay, we've got KC here with another item, $2 at a garage sale sold for two hundred dollars with free shipping sold overnight this is a dog watch receiver so one of those uh, for the invisible fencing setups what uh, the dog would wear around its neck to keep him inside that fence so two dollars sold for two hundred overnight We've got Larry and Kim here, got for free in a box of repair manuals. I also got for free. This is a vintage snap-on commemorative screwdriver set, and it almost looks like the handles are Bakelite. Um, 
didn't mention that in the title, but uh, could be. So it was free and it sold for $100. Sue Ann paid $6 at Goodwill, sold for full asking price of $99.99 in five months. This is a Mary Blair pinup dress, size 4X. Six dollars sold for a hundred. Brian paid ten dollars at a garage sale, sold for one seventy nine ninety nine plus shipping in a few months. This is a Tumi garment bag. Michelle finally found Johnny was, and it was new with tags, so I paid up for it. Eighteen dollars sold for full price the next day, and that was one hundred and forty nine dollars. So eighteen dollars turned into one hundred and forty nine in one day. This was a Johnny was red embroidered top. Suzanne Downing bought a $4 grab box at Michael's and these Windsor Newton Artist paints were loose in the bottom. They sold in less than a week for full price of $138. We've got Katarzyna here with a teddy bear. Purchased it in a bag of plush for $5. Listed it on August 12th sold for full price three weeks later and full price was two hundred and fifty dollars this is a murphy bears mohair jointed teddy bear vintage so it didn't even cost her the five dollars because it was part of a bag so maybe i don't know a dollar and sold it for two hundred and fifty suzanne tucker paid ten dollars at a garage sale sold in less than one day this is a stealth professional core trainer plank exercise and I actually saw this a couple of days ago on an ad I think it was on Hulu but um, what you do here is you put your phone in this little slot at the top and there's some kind of app that you put on your phone and so you're watching what to do during the workout and you put your uh, forearms on this board and you do all these funky plank exercises so it's kind of a, a newish exercise thing that's out there so looks really hard so um, if your core sucks and you get this and you try to do it and then you hate it it might end up in your garage sale for ten dollars and some smart people like us would come along and buy it and resell it for over a hundred so it's always funny when you see these items on like the Money Making Mondays, and then it just pops up in front of you a few days later. It's kind of like the universe saying, well, now you know about it. Here it is. Okay, Susan paid $5, sold in one day. This is the second brace I've sold for over $100. However, each one took tons of research to learn and how to put together and test. So this is an Osser Custom Gray Right Knee Brace Mint Condition. Paid $5, sold in one day for $110. Janae paid $1 per skein at rummage sale. I got 25 total. I only have four left. She sold these in a week. This is 14 skeins of yarn. So obviously discontinued, something special about it, but a dollar per skein so fourteen dollars and she sold these for two hundred and twenty five dollars for some yarn okay Casey again five dollars sold for hundred forty dollars with free shipping sold in about two weeks these are rare Maui Jim sunglasses and I've seen these pop up several times so I'm actually in the process of creating a eyeglasses course for my premium library if that's something you want to get into selling I'm learning all about that now and putting this course together as I'm learning all of this so that is often an overlooked niche because people just don't know or uh, they don't realize how profitable eyeglasses uh, rather prescription eyeglasses for the frames or sunglasses you know how profitable they can be so that is coming up Okay, we've got Cordelia. Took several months, had it up for more, but sent offer of $340. She paid $7.99 at a thrift store. This is a set of uh, Art Deco bookends. Had a blemish on the ear, 
and I think they would have sold faster. So not in perfect condition, but she still got $340 for these and she only paid eight bucks for them at a thrift store. So another example of thrift stores can't know everything. They didn't know about these. They didn't price them up too high. Here we've got Tina. And guess what? It's not a catalog, Tina. <laughs> Tina and I have a thing going back and forth about her catalog sales, but uh, she says her family teases her too. So, anyway, she sold these leather hockey gloves found at a local thrift store, paid $20, sold for $100. Okay, we've got Zena, bought two of these leather jackets with the tags still on them for $10 at a barn sale listed them for 150 plus shipping and accepted a best offer of 100 sold in two and a half weeks then a week later the same buyer bought the darker one for a hundred dollars plus shipping so these are scully leather jackets new with tag 412 dollars so they were ten dollars a piece and she sold each one of them for about a hundred now we've got Tracy. Took a couple of months but sold for full asking price of $115.99. Thanks to everyone on this group for the advice not to reduce my asking price. I just had to wait for the right buyer. She paid $20.63 for the set, sold them for $115. Here we've got another stitchery set. Rhonda purchased for $10 at an estate sale, sold in about two months for $209.50 with free shipping. Leah. This one took several months but totally worth it. Paid $4.99 at Goodwill. Some type of medical vest. Carmen. Bought at a thrift store for a quarter. Sold for full price by the Global Shipping Program to the Netherlands. Had it listed five or six months. The picture is mine although I tried to copy the style of other fountain pen photos I found. So this was a Schaefer fountain pen that she sold for $99 and she got this for a quarter. So another item that a thrift store overlooked. And then we're going to end this episode on the coveted Scrubbing Bubbles Auto Shower Spray Cleaner that a lot of you out there keep finding. Carolyn found this at Goodwill for $4, sold for full asking price after being listed for about two months sold quickly after I added free shipping. So $4 and it sold for $125. Okay, so I hope that's given you guys some new ideas and more importantly, some faith in the system that these items are out there. Thrift stores don't know everything. There is enough room in this business for everyone. So let's all buckle down, get busy and keep on making money. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.